Just the other day, CD Projekt Red released the biggest patch that Cyberpunk has seen, simply dubbed Cyberpunk 2.0, bringing a ton of new features and fixes, and along with it, in collaboration with Nvidia, DLSS 3.5 with Ray Reconstruction. So in typical eTechnics fashion, we've been hard at work testing 21 graphics cards to see how it works and what it means for performance. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature patched motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> and you call me the stupid one. Okay, so first things first, DLSS 3.5, as far as naming goes, sucks. And for one main reason, with the name 3.5, it implies that it's one step ahead of DLSS 3, which is what we get with the NVIDIA RTX 4000 series cards through the way of super resolution, reflex, and frame generation. Though even then, you could argue that DLSS 3 is purely just frame generation, as super resolution is available on older generation cards, along with reflex, which can be used on the GTX 900 series and up. So let's call a spade a spade and say that DLSS 3 is frame generation, and frame generation is DLSS 3. So 3.5 is frame generation with ray reconstruction, right? Wrong. Because DLSS 3.5 will work on all RTX based GPUs and doesn't include frame generation. So really it should have been called DLSS Ray Reconstruction or DLSS 2.75 for instance. So sorry Nvidia, but whoever thought of the naming on this one potentially needs their head checking out. So what actually is Ray Reconstruction? It basically makes ray tracing look better. That's the simple way of explaining it, which is something that Nvidia have been doing with all of their new technologies like path tracing in the form of overdrive in Cyberpunk and frame generation. But what's the more technical answer? Well, that is a bit of a complex one. With ray tracing, we see drops in performance in a sacrifice for the very best visual quality by lighting and reflections being increased and the light paths being traced both inside and out of the scene. And anyone who's tried it will know that it looks amazing. But depending on the GPU you have and the quality of the game you're playing, you'll be more than aware of the huge performance hits that it brings along with it. Luckily, the likes of DLSS, and especially with frame generation, helps to put the performance back into the realms of playable frame rates, which basically means rendering the scene at a lower resolution and then upscale it to the resolution you've set to play the game at. And for the most part, and with time, it has improved a lot, though still does give issues with latency, which results in the likes of ghosting, for instance. Now, while DLSS is AI based, and that's very evident in the name, deep learning super sampling, ray reconstruction is, I guess, a little bit different. And it's still AI based, but isn't working to improve frame rates like super resolution and frame generation, but instead is focused on improving the overall quality of the images that you see in those ray traced titles. And that all comes down to denoisers. Any game that you play with ray tracing enabled will use denoisers to clean up the image. Though between temporal and spatial denoisers, there are, I guess what we could say, drawbacks. Again, like ghosting. And as we saw when DLSS on Cyberpunk was first introduced, grain, which in some cases was damn right awful. And that's the main issue that gamers were faced with. Better quality in some sense for lower performance or getting that performance back, but suffering with quality. So until this point, it was down to you as a gamer to pick what was more important. Well, that all changes with ray reconstruction, as now, instead of hand-tuned denoisers, DLSS 3.5, or ray reconstruction, brings the AI side of things into play, which can improve that image quality once again. So now, thanks to the AI network, we're now getting fluid gameplay with ray trace visuals without the sacrifice of grain, overall image quality, or ghosting at least in theory. So how does it actually look? 
Well, at 1440p and 4K, it looks simply stunning, and that's clear to see as we look at the comparative recordings that we have at 4K, where ray tracing gives us a clear uplift in visual quality, while Overdrive takes that one step further by essentially cranking up the realism up to 11, which by what I mean is that the reflections and lighting are a truer representation of what you'd expect to see in real life. Obviously with this you do have a hindrance with performance as all of these shiny visuals will actually mean a performance hit. Then enabling DLSS3 with frame generation obviously using AI upscaling helps to improve the performance while maintaining amazing looking visuals. Then enabling ray reconstruction just helps to make the image that little bit crisper, a bit sharper, just more refined in general. And that's clear to see when we swap between having ray reconstruction enabled and disabled to see the clear difference between the two. And that's, I guess, most noticeable in reflections. So there's clearly a big uplift in the visual quality and nothing that really stands out in terms of drawbacks of using said technology. Though at 1080p, it's actually very, very clear that ray reconstruction isn't 100% perfect. And the reason I say that is that depending on the scene and what you're doing, there's a very noticeable wobble. And though I guess that's not the best technical term, it's well, all I've got right now. In terms of playing the game, it's not distracting, but we set out to analyze the quality and report back on the issues. And this is the main thing we found and is pretty evident when we look at a set of steps in the game where it almost looks like the top of the step is almost like rippling water. And my opinion on that is that it's almost like it's kind of struggling to define the bump map, which is a texture mapping technique that adds bumps or depth to an image over the top of an object, whether it be the ground, a wall, or even a door, for example. But to play devil's advocate, we are still in the early stages. So again, much like DLSS and frame generation, maybe we will see things improve as the AI network learns and gets better. And that really is, I guess, the whole point of it all. Now, one key thing with Cyberpunk 2.0 and having the ability of running DLSS 3.5 are the specs, which have actually changed since the 1.63 version of the game, where now quite a few things have changed, including the uplifting processors, especially at ray trace levels, where the likes of an i9-12900 or Ryzen 9 7900X is actually recommended for ray tracing ultra or overdrive. Also, we find an increase in GPU, including minimum VRAM, where we see the likes of the 3080 being recommended on Ray Tracing Ultra, now to a 3080 Ti. The big takeaway though, is how before you could play on a hard drive as a minimum, and SSDs were recommended for all other levels. Whereas now they recommend an SSD for all levels, with anything from Ultra, including Ray Tracing, now actually recommending an NVMe drive specifically. So yeah, visuals and specs aside, I said that ray reconstruction isn't about performance, right? And instead it's all about the visual quality. But with any form of DLSS, you would actually expect somewhat of an, an uplift. Well, that's where we went to town in retesting everything for the purposes of this video, by taking 21 GPUs and putting them through their paces in eight different graphical configurations per resolution. So bear with me because there's quite a lot of data to go through. Though the main thing we're actually looking at is RT overdrive with ray reconstruction off, DLSS on versus ray tracing overdrive with ray reconstruction on and then DLSS 3 compared as well as that's kind of the only thing it's really available on right now though for the sake of seeing how things do compare to no ray tracing DLSS 3 frame generation and pure bog standard ray tracing we've actually tested all of that to include too. Now to test, we put the cards on our GPU test bench consisting of an Intel Core i9-12900K with 32 gig of Patriot Viper 6200 MHz DDR5 dual channel memory on an Asus Maximus Z690 Hero motherboard. All of our tests were done on the latest 537.42 Nvidia GeForce driver and were all run on Windows 11. Now it is worth noting that there are some very evident bottlenecks on pretty much all of the 40 series cards at the lower resolution, lower setting scenarios. So keep that in mind. So. Let's get into the performance results to see exactly how each card did. Starting with the RTX 4090, where straight away we can see the clear bottleneck in some of the settings. But what's worth noticing is the performance between overdrive with no reconstruction and with reconstruction. At the lower resolutions, we see the results within 2% of each other, while at 4K that gap widens with reconstruction giving us 6% more performance and with more clarity. While enabling DLSS3 is very much the same story, with 4K giving us the biggest uplift of 6% with reconstruction on. 
so you're getting slightly more performance and better visuals overall. Moving on to the RTX 4080, we find the same clear bottleneck happening at 1080p, but as we focus on the other resolutions, we do see that while enabling reconstruction, the performance is within 1-2%, to while at 4K that performance increases to a little under 9%, which is nothing to be snubbed at. As we enable DLSS3, that performance increases by up to 100% at 1080p, though at the more likely 4K resolution, you're still going to see differences of 56% over not having DLSS3 on, which also puts it around 5% faster than having reconstruction disabled. The 4070 Ti doesn't fare as well with smaller gains again at 1080p of under 3%, while 4K does still give a nice 6% uplift when enabling reconstruction. Though at under 40 FPS, you may not be super happy with the overall gameplay experience. Again, DLSS3 comes to the rescue, propelling the performance forward, with the largest gain coming at 4K with a 5% uplift with reconstruction enabled, putting the performance just under 60 FPS and perfectly playable on maximum settings with everything enabled and simply looking stunning. Moving down the stack to the 4070 and at 1080p we start to see our first casualty when we enable reconstruction, which now loses 14% performance compared to just overdrive with DLSS. But again, there's a clear bottleneck, even on an RTX 4070. Enabling DLSS3 naturally gets around that and gives healthy uplifts across the board. Then focusing on 1440p, which is I guess where you'd really want to be playing with this calibre of card, and we see an uplift of 5% from overdrive with reconstruction off to with reconstruction on, and a slightly smaller 4% when comparing overdrive with DLSS3, again with reconstruction off and on. While 4K does give us higher margins of around 7%, we're now at much lower frame rates that some gamers just wouldn't be happy with, though even at above 40fps, I've played Cyberpunk and had no issues. The 4060 Ti 8GB is still playable at 1440p thanks to DLSS3 which, with reconstruction enabled, gives us identical performance to without, though with stronger 1% lows. While without DLSS3, even with reconstruction enabled, we're bordering on the unplayable levels and is likely more suited for 1080p, which also fares well and sees a 7% uplift in performance with reconstruction enabled, though again, frame gen is where you want to be looking at 99fps, which is a pretty astonishing 16% more performance with reconstruction enabled, though this will lead to the wobbling that I mentioned earlier in terms of bump maps. The last one in the 40 series stack is the RTX 4060, which at 1080p sees a 9% uplift in performance by enabling reconstruction, though actually sees a small 2% decrease in performance when comparing the DLSS3 numbers. Then as we move up in resolution to 1440p, overdrive with DLSS3 comes in at 51fps, though enabling reconstruction actually sees a dramatic hit of 18% now coming in at 42 FPS, which is still playable and looks amazing, but with a 4060 you'll likely be playing at 1080p anyway. Moving on to the last generation and the flagship 3090 Ti, which as a side note doesn't have frame gen, so there's less to compare. It's here where we see some of the biggest increases, where at 1080p enabling reconstruction gives us a whopping 23% more performance, whilst looking visually better at the same time, even with the bump mapping issue that we saw. 1440p sees that gain drop to 4% though is still welcomed and a slightly larger 6% margin at 4k, though again we're now in the realms of almost unplayable frame rates. Its little brother, the RTX 3090, still sees some decent numbers at 1080p with a 13% increase in performance by enabling reconstruction, while 1440p still remains at good levels as well, with a 5% uplift with reconstruction enabled. Again, 4K is playable at 32fps with reconstruction enabled, though more demanding scenes may see some slight stutter in the dips and 1% lows. The 3080 Ti again sees some pretty solid increases in performance with 12% more with reconstruction enabled at 1080p, a smaller 5% of 1440p and a slightly larger 6% of 4K, which again, very similar to its bigger brother, is just on the border of playable frame rates, though a few tweaks of the settings could see that increase without sacrificing the visuals too much. Moving down the stack to the 3080 12GB and at 1080p we see that reconstruction gives us a 12% uplift while also giving us better quality visuals and with pretty decent frame rates at the same time, while 1440p still comes in pretty impressive around 60fps with a slight 3% increase with reconstruction on. 
4K is just on the cusp of playable, and reconstruction gives us another 7% more performance, though at such a low frame rate, it's nothing that you'd really notice anyway. The slightly lesser RTX 3080 10 gig, as you'd expect, sees slightly lesser numbers, though we still see 13% more performance with reconstruction on at 1080p, 6% of 1440p, and 11% of 4K though this does only equate to just 3 frames per second, which puts the gameplay just above playable levels, but again could see some large dips depending on the scene. Continuing down to the RTX 3070 Ti where reconstruction gives us an uplift of 8% more performance at 1080p, while 1440p sees our frame rate drop to the low 40s, though we still see a 7% increase in performance with ray reconstruction enabled. Moving to 4K, the gain is much larger at 18%, but we're really at the level where you wouldn't be enjoying the game at 20fps. The RTX 3070 with reconstruction turned on at 1080p still sees numbers above 60fps and an uplift of just under 15%, while 1440p sees a much smaller increase of just 5%, and still coming in with what you class as playable. 4K however is a different story with a 15% increase that leads to overdrive with DLSS and reconstruction turned on, giving just 15 frames per second. The ever so popular RTX 3060 Ti comes in at 55 FPS with reconstruction turned on at 1080p, which is a 15% increase over having reconstruction turned off. 1440p gives lower numbers at 36 FPS, which is still playable with a 6% increase over having reconstruction disabled. The 3060 12 gig sees performance increase with reconstruction turned on by 13%, now at 44 frames per second, compared to 39 disabled at 1080p. 1440p still sees gains of 8% by enabling ray reconstruction, but under 30 FPS, it's not something you'd ever likely do. The somewhat lackluster, not well received RTX 3050 just about hits 30 FPS at 1080p with reconstruction turned on, which is a whopping 13% improvement over having the technology turned off. For 1440p and 4K, it's just not viable and something that I wouldn't even entertain in the first place. Moving on to the what was beastly at the time RTX 2080 Ti, which sees an almost 20% increase in performance by enabling DLSS 3.5 technology at 1080p, pushing 49 FPS, while 1440p still manages to come in over 30 frames per second, with a small but still welcome 3% improvement. And then 4K now is pretty much out of reach for this card. The 2080 Super still manages 42 FPS with reconstruction turned on, which is a small 5% uplift at 1080p, while all other resolutions are now frankly unplayable. But it's good to see that a 2080 Super is still able to game on max settings at 1080p. The RTX 2080 comes in at 39 frames per second at 1080p, which is a 26% uplift from having reconstruction disabled, while all other resolutions aren't even worth entertaining, as the numbers are just too low with overdrive enabled, and instead, standard ray tracing is, eh, well, about as far as you can go with DLSS enabled. With the 2070, it's a similar story with 1080p being the only resolution that you can get away with being what I'd say as fluid at 30 FPS. Though again, certain scenes may come in lower and become stuttering, but the uplift of 25% is still very much welcomed. Finally, the RTX 2060 Super is not really good for overdrive in any scenario at any resolution, and instead the closest you're going to get is with ray tracing set to ultra and DLSS set to performance at 49 FPS or at 1440p under the same settings. So that was a lot of data to go through, but I think it's pretty clear to see that even though Nvidia haven't set out purposely to increase performance, that is the case. Certain cards gave quite large gains while others gave much smaller gains. And to be honest, I think anything is welcomed as Team Green haven't gone about and made any say bold claims about improving performance. But if you can get clearer visuals and not take a hit, then I'm all for it. But actually seeing increases is just, well, even better. Now, I went into this not expecting much, and we did do a few initial tests to see kind of what the case would be, and then did a few more cards, and then ended up testing 21 cards in total. And I think it also serves as an interesting comparison between all of the different settings, including no ray tracing, ray tracing enabled, ray tracing with DLSS, ray tracing with DLSS 3, overdrive with DLSS, overdrive with DLSS 3, and then those again, but with ray reconstruction on, yeah, you get it. So hopefully it allows you to look at the charts for your particular card or maybe even one that you're looking to upgrade to in a, I don't know, a bid to see what's capable as some of these results actually really surprised me. Remember, even though most gamers want 60 FPS, Cyberpunk is built different and can be played at 30 FPS quite comfortably. 
And the fact that that can be done on older, lesser cards with the likes of Ray Reconstruction, and then obviously lower end cards with DLSS3 at higher resolutions, it's quite astounding considering that overdrive itself is the top of the top top settings top ray tracing path tracing the works now that side i do feel as mentioned earlier that ray reconstruction at least at low resolutions still has some way to go but as i said that's the joy of ai and the advantage nvidia have through using ai to make things better and mature over time so things can only get better from here and that about wraps this one up it's been a lot to go through, but thanks for bearing with me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do and the huge amounts of testing, which took about 20 hours in total, so shout out to Brandon for that one, then consider supporting us through Patreon, where you get a ton of cool benefits, including game nights, monthly live streams, access to our testing data, meetups, and much more. The link for all that is down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.